What's up, you two? Gonna sing you guys a song here. You guys ready? Just kidding. Anyways, I'm gonna be talking about the Calcic Bible because a lot of people were asking me about the Calcic Bible. So we're gonna go into the PDF file here. Uh, if I can find, oh yeah, there it is. So we are gonna talk about the Calcic Bible. I'm just gonna highlight some stuff that I read in the book. Like I said, I didn't read the whole book, and a lot of people were asking a lot of different questions on formations, uh, patterns, uh, which candles to look for. So I'll give you guys my insight. I don't think I talked about this book uh, in any. I think I talked about the book, but I didn't talk. You know, I didn't think I made a video about the book. So let's uh, so let's go here. Um, this is pretty. This the calcic patterns right here. This is what you should read up on because if you don't understand what the candlestick is, what it looks like, and identify the candlestick, then there's no point even reading this book. So that's why it's really critical to read, right? Especially from page 11 because it talks about right here what is a candlestick, and then looking through all the candlestick patterns. And I'll go through all these candlestick patterns and I'll explain what I look for. And what I am determined on buying or selling based on the candlestick. So this might be a long video. And I don't, yeah, I didn't read anything in all this. So let's go here. Uh, first page you look. Do, 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 do. So bear with me, guys. Um, I don't, I don't look at all this. I don't look at this at all. And I'll explain that. Long versus short. Okay, so... Hold on, where's 11 at? What is a candlestick? That's right. Japanese candlesticks are formed using the open, high, low, and close of the chosen time frame. Chosen time frame is very important than the open, high, low, and close. Because if all you're doing is just looking at all this and you're and and you're not looking at the time frame, let's just say you're you were scalping off the five minute. And you're looking at the four hour time frame, obviously it's a big difference, right? So if you're scalping and you see candle, I mean obviously these two candles are doji candles. So based on this, you know, for me on a doji candle setup, I'm looking for reversal. And I'll explain that. Uh I won't be on the book. If I it have to be a different video, and I don't want to make this a, a long video either. So let me delete this. It has to be a separate video. I'm, I'm explaining that. So long versus short, but I'll show you guys the candlesticks that I look for. So we're bearish and golfing bar, right? So the the problem with this in this book, they don't show you a time frame. But based on this, you can see that this candle, I would sell. That's the easiest way I can say it. Bearish and golfing bar. Bearish, bearish and golfing candle. They call it a bar because there's a, let's see, uh, hold on. You can see that it's, it's, you can see that this is a smaller candle, right? And you can see, that the price went up, but then at the closing of this candle, it was a bearish, bearish, uh, bearish to me, bearish engulfing candle over the previous candle. So that's what they're saying. And that's a sign of selling, shorting. Shorting the markets, selling the markets, okay. And then, yeah, and then they show you the, they show you this, but like I said, this is, this is this is not like a, a really good time frame to look at it. I mean, it shows you the days here. Based on this, it looks like a daily chart. So the way the way you can see March first, March second, and then March fifth. So and you can and you can see that it's still continuing down until you can see here and here, right? The inverted, right? They, oh, I forgot this one is um. I think it was the dragonfly candle and then it inverted back up and then you can see how this one came back down, right? Two points of contact 
still on a strong downtrend. So very important to pay attention to this. And, and, and it talks about this, right? Trend can anticipate a trend reversal because buyers are still not in control of the market and sellers trying to push the market to go down. So very important, especially if you are looking at the daily chart, right? If you look at the daily chart, what's going to happen for the next five, six, seven daily candles? Five daily, five daily candles, that's five days, right? That's five daily candles, six daily candles. That's six daily candles. That's six days, seven days. I look ahead because if you're not looking ahead and if it is a reversal point at, at this time, right, then you're going to be, you're going to get caught if you're trying to scalp the market. And that's the problem when you're scalping the market when there's a trend. When you scalp a trend, good luck because you, you're really not going to make much scalping off a trend. You're better off stacking on a trend. And that's what I would recommend. That's what, I, that's what I'd be doing. But, and that the reason why I would stack on a trend because I'm looking for a confirmation of a reversal point off the trend where it's going to pivot off, whether it be a downtrend or an uptrend. We always want to spot a trend because if you're not spotting trends, you're constantly, you're constantly scalping on micro lots, right? Most people scalp on micro lots and mini lots, and they're anticipating making a lot of money off those positions, which you're really not. Now, if I caught a trend and I was, and I was stacking 10, 15 positions, 10 mini lots, right? Or maybe 10 micro lots, you know, I'm, I'm multiplying my profits and the pips at the same time. But the mo most important thing is, mo is having exponential growth. So that's another thing to, to pay attention to. Let's go back down here to the um, other candlestick pattern here. Bullish engulfing bar, just like the bearish engulfing bar, but they call it bars. I, well, I, to me, I just call it candle. So the previous candle that they're showing you right now, this is a bear candle and then this is a bull candle closing and it's, and it's bigger than the previous candle. So it's letting you know, right? It's letting you know that the buyers are in position and that you are going to be buying for the next higher price and holding it for the higher price. And that's what I'd be looking at too. So going down here, bullish and golden bar, right? And you can see that these two points of contact create a support right down here. Bullish. It is bullish engulfing over the previous candle here on the bear candle. And it is, is going up. So this is just a, a, a prime example for them showing you this on the book here. There's a lot, like I said, you, there's a lot to look at, especially, you know, when it's engulfing over. And the only time... I would look at engulfing candles is daily, weekly, and monthly charts because sometimes on the floor it gets kind of tricky, but or from the daily, weekly, and monthly charts, those are the three highest time frames. With the four hour, it gets a little bit mixed up, especially when four hour becomes a consolidation zone or a consolidated structure. But there's, when there's a lot of consolidation on the four hour, there's really no point staring at the four hour anymore because now you're just looking at now you need to go cut back to the lower time frame and look into you know where the breakout's going to move and that's really key in, in in the components of the candlesticks because if all you're doing is just stuck with one time frame and there's a lot of consolidation on that time frame you're not going to get a whole lot going on and i always suggest people to go down to a lower time frame so they can see massive moves right at that time and it could be at the beginning of the session, right? Or it could be at the end of the session. During the session, it gets kind of tricky when they're just consolidating, you know, for the next three, four hours. What are you going to do? You can't sit there forever and stare at it for the next three, four hours and hoping for a breakout. So, anyways, I didn't have nothing to do talking about the book, but I'm just trying to reiterate you know stuff in the past that's happened to me and what you should really consider for when things are not going the way that you're anticipating uh so whoops go back <laughs> yeah bullish engulfing bar uh da, 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 da. we're here right shows us clearly how the market changes direction after the formation of a bullish engulfing bar pattern 
Oh. Okay, I'm just trying to go back down. Do, 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 do. Don't try to trade the market using the price action set up alone. Price action. Interesting. But if you tie price action count sticks, that is really key. But I'm not talking about price action today. Doji candles. These are my way of looking at reversal candles. By far, doji candles are, for me, the best way to identify reversal points and when candles are being exhausted at the very top or at the very bottom. I'm not talking about lower time frames. I'm talking about four-hour, daily, weekly, and monthly. If you look at these candles on the four-hour, daily, weekly, and monthly charts, you get, you get a good viewpoint of what I'm talking about. When you go down from the one hour all the way down to the one minute, and you look at doji candles, it gets a little tricky, and you get to see a lot of these candles, and then it gets confusing because then you're like, why am I looking at these candles for? You have to really understand why you want to look at a doji candle. And they don't really, they don't really specify what time frames to look for. They just tell you, this book is just telling you what these candlesticks are and how to analyze it yourself and then, and then start applying it to the real time frames when you're trading live. So, but I'm giving you guys my ex full experience on this. And candlesticks are really great to approach it with price action right after that. That's why I talk about naked forks. Naked forks where it's at right now. So with these candles, like I mean on here, right? This is a really perfect example. Now they don't show you the time frame, right? This is page 21 here. Page, yeah, page 21 here. Right here, page 21. But right, they show you this prime example of the doji candle of reversal. But it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't specify the time frame. But if you look at this on a daily chart, that is really cool. And it's critical to pay attention to, right? You can see that this lines up perfectly, perfectly with resistance, right? The previous bull candle here, doji candle, and then the bear candle. Perfect. This is a perfect prime example of looking for a set like this. Usually on the daily charts, you get to see this more, more often. Uh, four hour too, but then four hour can be tricky when four hour ends up consolidating. So that's the only problem that I hate about the four hour is that when there is consolidation on the four hour, you have to you have to divert and go back into the lower time frame and look for breakouts out of that structure or out of that zone. And it's really critical because if you don't do that, then and and all you're doing is looking for a reversal candle, then you don't know what a re, then you don't know which reversal candle it is, especially when it breaks out to a massive bearish engulfing candle or a bullish engulfing candle. Then you don't know what to do from there, and that's why don't just try and look for the Doji candles on the higher time frames when there's consolidation. So that's my that is my my um, experience on that. Um, well, now let's go down to really don't want to talk too much about doji cans, but that is a really great prime example. The dragonfly, I think that's what I said. The dragonfly candle, and you can see the inverted, right? They call this a bullish candlestick. Why? Because the bit, I mean, um, the bulls, right? They peaked it down and the bulls came back up and closed up, and it's like a T, it's like a, a, a letter T, and that's what it is. And they even said this right here, a bullish reversal signal created by Dragonfly Doji. This is, these are really critical candlesticks, especially during consolidated structures and price uh, tight price zones. Reason being is because when, the, when, let's just say they were selling gold for a week straight, and then we come into the new opening on Sunday. I'm just giving you guys an example. And you see this, right? They sold gold from $1,700 all the way down to $1,400. And you see this Dragonfly Doji candlestick. Really, really strong, right? Place a buy position. You can't go wrong testing the buy position when you see something like this. So that's why I don't get why people don't test their positions. I mean, the, you can test 0.01. You can always test a, a one micro lot position to see the direction of, of, of the trend or the direction of this um, of the uh, of the currency. 
makes sense, right? You see, you see, you spot direction, go for it, you know? So, other than that, that's it. Just kidding. Anyways, um, like right here. So right here, right, right here. Now it gets tricky, right? Cause it goes up, you pay, you place a buy and then they pin it back down. Then they really pin it back down and it creates support here. But these two candles did not break the, the lower wick and then ended up going all the way back up to retest this previous high. Anytime you see something like this, you always want to see if it's going to re you always want to see if it's going to break the retest of the previous highs. Anytime it doesn't break the previous highs, you got to be, be prepared for, for them to shoot it back down. And that's really key because, uh, no, 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 let me go back. This candle is just like this candle. Just remember that. These two that I'm showing right now on page 24 are the very same. Uh, I forgot what the name is called. Let me go back and uh, go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. What the name is called? Gravestone Toji. I don't know where to get these names. But that is the opposite of the dragonfly. That's another, uh, that's another count I always look for, especially during the one hour and the four hour because they create a lot of these candles, uh, a lot of these candlesticks within the one hour and to the four hour. Not so much on the daily, weekly, and monthly, but when you see this on the one hour and the four hour, really good times to look at scalping for a few hours, right? Because price is getting reversed back down, and this is considered a bearish candle. So you can see the inverted, you know, the bears are in control, right? Because the bears send the candle right back down, closing in like this. So it's just a, it's an upside down letter T. That's all it is. And that's the way I, I, I'm just explaining my point of view. Obviously, they're talking about, you know, the long upper tail is a indication, you know, indication that the market is testing a powerful supply or resistance area. So obviously, I'm not that too technical on my terms. But you get my point of what I'm saying is that when you notice these candles, right, one hour, four hour, maybe the 15 minute, I don't know. But usually the one hour and the four hour chart, you get a chance to see this, this setup here. So pretty important, like I said, to understand your time frames along with these candlesticks. Because if you're not, if you're just looking at candlesticks and you don't understand what time frame you're looking at, then what are you placing a buy or a sell position for anyways in the beginning? And why are you and why are you posting up entries that you're not even sure, but all you do is just trying to rely on one thing. Yes, it's great to go off of one confirmation right away, but technically you want at least two, three other confirmations on top of the right price. Right? If this is being if this is a reversal point, right? Gravestone doji on the four hour, and this lines up with the previous candle to the to the next candle at resistance. Uh, hold on, let me go back. Go back. I'm gonna go back. Um, yeah, we'll just show this one. Let me show this one. All right, you can see this. Based on this, I would sell. Now, obviously, they're not showing you a time frame, but when you see this on the one hour and the four hour, you know. You just gotta be right. I mean, you 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 getting the confirmation of going ahead and looking at okay, it's been up for a while. You can see that the inverted, you know, the bears are in control with the long wick pushing down. When you see the count closing down a really really long wick, and you look at these wicks, right? And I, I looks like I haven't really gone through the whole book, but the wicks are telling you who's in control. So whether it could be the bulls are in control or like how here the bulls are are in control right massive move back up and then here not so much and it came back and it still went at and then created this anytime like i said this to me consolidation right here it gets tricky it gets really tricky and when there is consolidation then i shift to the lower time frames because I want to see where it's going to break out of 
And when it does break out, then I go back to the higher time frames to look at the daily high, the daily low, right? Where's if it's Wednesday, okay, we know we only have two more trading days after that. What could possibly happen within Thursday and Friday? So you gotta know, you gotta stay ahead of the curve. And you always want to stay ahead of you know where where they could possibly reverse the trend and where is the trend gonna get bounced off of at what price? Right? There's always retracements too. So there's other factors within the candlesticks. And if all you're doing is just relying on one candlestick pattern or just a candlestick that you're looking at, you're not gonna get so far in trading. So you gotta understand everything. And once you understand, I'm not saying just understand everything, but you wanna understand your own terms and definitions of trading and along with your own goals and your discipline of trading and tying your mindset. So obviously mindset is more important, but most people are no, don't even look at that for themselves. Morningstar is good. I don't really see too much morning stars on the lower time frames. I see a lot of morning stars on four hour daily, mostly four hour charts and daily. So it's just a reversal point of buying versus selling. Evening star is where you sell, morning star is where you buy. So right here. So right here. And notice that the evening star candles are doji candles. That's Easy way I can say it. That's why that's why the number one candle I like the most are doji candles. If you look at this candle that they're indicating, it's still a doji candle. They just call it they just call it a bullish or bearish candle, but I don't care about that. But if you see the closing on the candle, you can see a wick on top and a wick on the bottom. I still call it a doji candle. So don't get all mixed up saying, "Oh yeah, I think I see a morning star can uh, candlestick pattern." Forget the morning star. Forget the morning star candle pattern. Look at that single candle that closed out and look at that trend. If it's going to reverse, so it's really cool that they show this on the daily. And daily charts are really critical to look at this stuff along with the four hour. You don't get so much to see on the weekly because the weekly, you want to look for inverted hammers and you want to look for trend reversals on the weekly to see what could possibly happen for the whole monthly candle anyways, right? So especially when you're swinging for that long. So this is critical because at this point, right, you're looking at this and you're like, well, you know, is it worth buying? Is it worth selling? Right? You can see that the previous candle, you know, before the doji was a bearish engulfing candle. And then the doji came in to close in. And then the bullish candle came in to close in. But both all these three candles lined up as support. So that's another key confirmation of buying besides the besides the really the, the really small doji candle closing in so and then you can see it broke the previous high it went up higher and then it tested a new high and then and then it started going going back down so is it going to continuation back down no why don't you draw a trend line and see if it's going to break that that's what i would recommend so it's very it's very critical to understand, you know, the trend structures behind this, especially when you're looking at candlesticks, right? Every candlestick gives you a price. Every candlestick has a clue. Price. Both candlesticks can create resistance or support. Remember that. It just takes two candlesticks to create support and resistance. Some people get a little too technical on their candlestick stuff and then they get all caught up and then they're like, oh man, you need to simplify. You always should always simplify the math, calculations, entries, exits, price. I mean, people look at so many different variables and they're like, oh, I'm not so sure if I should get in. Well, they don't even get in then. You got to simplify in your trading. Okay? When you don't simplify your trading, you're not going to get anywhere. Let's go to Evening Star, and then I think that's it, right? Oh, no, a hammer pin. I forgot. Man, this one, I, was, I think this might be a long video. So um, Evening Star. So Evening Star, this is just a way of looking at reversal. See? Put it right here. See right, I'm going to highlight this right here. 
The second candle is a small candlestick and it can be a bullish or bearish or it can be a doji or any other candlestick. Remember that, but in, I want to say this, 90, 90 I want to say, yeah, I want to say 95% of the time it's a doji candle. I'll, the other 5%, like, ha, like a hammer, like an inverted hammer. So I don't like, what do I want to say? Like a dragonfly and a gravestone. That's what I meant. But dojis, 90% of the time. And so that's why I'm putting it out there. A lot of people read this whole thing. They read the whole book and then they're like, what? That wasn't even a count. Evening, uh, they're like, well, that wasn't even the evening star pattern, but it's still reversed. Why is that? Maybe it could have been a fundamental event. But at the same time, at a technical standpoint, on your technical analysis, it could, it was a evening star pattern. You just didn't see it. So that's why it's really critical to understand your technical analysis and your charts when you graph out your charts. And if you're using indicators, I can't help you because this is not talking about indicators. So just something to think about. And let's go to their... Um, evening star here now you can see that this is a doji candle right and this doji candle was a bear candle and this is a previous bull candle here creating the same line closing of resistance price okay the same resistance price that the candle closed the doji and the previous bull candle closed at the same price so that's resistance and then it went back down and then you can see another line of resistance here. And I would just keep selling down for it to retest the low. That's it. That's all I'd be doing. Now, it doesn't tell you what time frame it is, but you get a good point of what they're trying to put out there on this diagram. So obviously, yes, they don't really, they don't really tell you what time frames to look for because they're trying to portray that it can happen at any time frame, which is true. But there are certain time frames where you see this uh, quite a bit. And I recommend looking at the one hour and four hour on this. Sometimes on the daily gets a, gets a little tricky, you know, because you only get five strong days of trading because Sunday, I don't really count on Sundays, but, but, but um, you know, five daily candles versus what? Versus what? 30, 40, 30, 40, one hour candles and, 20 to 34 hour candles on the week. I mean, that's, just, that's what I'm trying to say here. So it's, it's really critical to pay attention to the one hour and tie it to the four hour to look at these candlestick structures and then tie the price because you're, because the highest price and the lowest price gives you a good gap of what the trend's going to be. Or if it's consolidation, then there, there really is no point trying to look for this pattern anyways. When there's consolidation on the evening star and the morning star, why even try and, and mess around with a trend if there is no trend? You always got to be careful on that. So that's why I'm not reading this book because anybody can read the book. Give you guys my full viewpoint on this because some people are not understanding the way I'm trading. And, and they're, I talk about the book and I, I apologize that I haven't really got into uh, a more detailed version of going through this. So I know a lot of people are anticipating this um, video here. This is really important. Hammer pins. This is just like a dragonfly. It's just that it's a little bit. Um, it's it, it's a. Um, da, 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 da. I don't know. I still call it. I, to me, I don't call it dragonfly or graystone candles unless it's really like an actual like the letter T or an upside down T. Usually, you get you, usually you get to see these hammer pin bars more often than than the gravestones and the and the uh, dragonfly doji candles. These are also critical because these are reversal candlestick patterns on the higher time frame: four hour, daily, weekly, monthly. Now, when monthly hits up, look at gold on the monthly, and you get to see the inverted hammer pin going pushing back down on gold. And same thing with. Um, US 30. If you look at US 30 and you look at the monthly chart, I think it was the monthly or the weekly, you get to see the inverted hammer pin where they're trying to buy 
uh, where they're trying to buy US 30. So it's just another way of looking at, you know, reversal and pivot points and where price is being, you know, rejected to bounce back up. And this is really critical to look into hammer pins. Uh, they're showing you this one right here. This is to me, like I said, you can just look at this as an evening star. It's just that you can see a, a much stronger wick at the bottom, a longer wick and longer wick at the bottom. Bulls are in control, longer wick at the top, bears are in control. So think about that. I'm not going to go through this example because there's a lot of examples to look through. Uh, da, 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 da. shooting star shooting star bearish pin bar so this is it, oh they didn't really specify what, what this time frame was but but this is what this is what you could see this if you look at this if you look at gold on monthly chart i you could see this so very critical pay attention to this and also pay attention like i said doji candles the reason why you want to look at these candles is because you want to spot trend reversal. That's the biggest thing. And then on top of that is if you're scalping, then you're looking for, you know, when you want to close out and enter back in. So that's the easy way I can say it. Now this, I don't know. There, there isn't really much of a, a shooting star. I mean, obviously based on this, you can see the, that they, they pinned it back down. They pinned candle back down. Bears are control, right? Close is almost just like the um, more uh, evening star pattern is that they pinned it back down, they closed it, and then they and then they shot it back down to retest the um, where it came back up. So uh, let's see. Her, I do not look at the I do not look at this candle, I'll be honest. Pregnant in Japanese. Isn't that crazy? Pregnant in Japanese. Mother candle, smaller candle. I don't look at this bearish reversal signal. I don't let me see what the example is because I don't recall looking at this one. Okay. They're showing you two examples. I'm going to explain my two examples. Pay attention to the doji candles at the very bottom and at the very top. That's all you that's that's what you should really look for. You can see that what you're looking for is that I don't know what time frame this is, but based on the higher time frame, right? Um that's why I talk about these higher time frames. Based on four hour, daily, weekly, monthly. You're starting to see this. When you get like I said, when you get a chance to see all this, right? This whole you when you like zoom out and you look at the candlestick structure and you get to see a bunch of doji candles at the very top, creating creating the same resistance as the previous candle, right? Same thing with the doji candles at the very bottom, creating the same uh, closing of support price as the previous candle. Tie the tie the previous candles to the dojis, and and look at that as if, if this is the lowest price of the day, right? Or 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 is this the lowest price on the four hour? You know, for the or uh, you know, of that session, you never know, right? Based on that, look to see where it's gonna where it's gonna bounce off of. So this isn't a really good picture to look for, to look at, especially reading um what they're basing off of. Obviously, it gets confusing, right? Because then they give you just a snapshot, and then you're kind of like, well, I need to look for this. Then what, what? What exactly are you looking for, right? Look at the trend. Where, where is the trend going? Okay, they reverse the trend back up. Okay, now, now it's creating another lot, a level of resistance. Okay, if that's going to be resistance, then I'm going to sell it. If you're afraid to sell the position, test the position to see if where the direction is going to go. Can't go wrong testing positions. So. Uh, let's see. What else? I think that's what tweezers. I don't look at tweezers. I'll be honest. I don't look at tweezers, tops and bottoms. I do not look at this tweezer top. I don't look at that. I'll be honest. I don't look at this. Yeah, I don't. I don't look at the tweezers. Uh, candlestick patterns exercise. Okay. 
Right. So they want you to identify what these candlestick means. Screw at looking at every single candlestick. You're going to get so frustrated, stressed out, looking at every single candlestick and trying to identify what the candlestick pattern is. Doesn't make any sense. Based on this, right? I'll just do this. They could not test a new low. Went up. Broke this resistance, broke the previous resistance. And it keeps going up. Now, obviously, your question is, well, Ku, how, why would you, well, at this point, why would you keep buying it if they shot it back down, right? I'm treating that, I'm treating that as retracement. If you're not for sure, guess what you do? Draw a trend line. Draw a trend line. That's it. Draw a trend line. It gets a little tricky when candles do close below the trend line and then it bounces right back up. So, but we don't know what time frame this is, right? They're just giving you a picture of candlesticks and you and they're trying to get you to um understand what these candlesticks are. You should you should not get way too tech uh way too technical and staring at the formations and structures of the candles. You should not be doing that. Overall, if the price is driven to go back up and it's going to keep going back up, swing it. Same thing that they're going to send it down and they're going to keep breaking down new lows, just like what we're seeing right now for Australia and New Zealand. They, Australia and New Zealand has been breaking new lows for the past three months. This year, this whole year, pretty much. That's since it started. So just think about that, where Australia and New Zealand's going. I'm giving you guys, you know, as much as I can. Because I know a lot of you guys, I know a lot of you guys are struggling. Um, I know that some of you guys are looking for positive information out there on YouTube. And I'm, I'm trying to give you guys what I can. You know, I'm trying to be the best I can out there. And whether you guys take this information and do it upon yourself or not, that's totally on you. You know, I'm going to keep doing me. I don't really care if no one doesn't believe in what I do. I'm going to keep doing me. You know, they don't pay my bills. I pay my own bills. So, like I said, this, I, like I said, I hope this is very informative and this helps you guys out. And I think <laughs> I apologize for not making this video a, lot, um, a while back because I know this was being asked. And I talked about it, but I didn't really explain a whole lot on how I looked at it. So hope this helps out with you guys. And if it makes sense, you know, like I said, if it makes sense, you got to test it out. You got to apply it. You got to keep going. If you, if you stop learning, you're not going to grow. You got to keep going, guys. So other than that, I wish you guys a great Saturday, a great weekend. Uh, like I said, April's coming up. Let's get rid of this virus. You know, let's go. Let's get things back to normal. Let's work on positivity and creativity here, you know, for everybody. And, let's, you know, let's keep going. So other than that, that's it, guys. So I will touch I will touch more base on the book again. Just not right now. I'm going to go back and read over some things. Like I said, the most important thing was understanding the candlestick patterns. So other than that, peace out, guys. Oh.